Hi guys, Dr. Lori Sesnick here, a neuroscientist, clinical neuropsychologist here to talk about ADHD. I want to try to keep this video pretty short, so we're just going to talk about how to know you've got it <laughs> and sort of what to do about it. Uh, as a neuroscientist, neuropsychologist, I approach it a little bit differently than perhaps some other clinicians might. In my opinion, no two people ever look the same on attention tasks. There are many different types of inattention. There's auditory attention, visual attention, switching of attention, switching your attention between concepts, switching your attention visually uh, between items in space, switching between auditory and visual information, holding your attention over time. These are many different types of attention. In order to understand fully what your attention looks like, you really need to have a full neuropsychological evaluation completed, which takes all day. That allows us to really understand what inattention looks like for you, given all of these tasks. And also to compare your attention with your overall intellect. If you have below average attention, but your intellect is also below average, that's nothing unusual, and that would be actually even be expected. If you have superior intellect and even average attention, that's notable and interesting for you, and it does indicate that attention is uniquely weak for you. So there are a lot of reasons why you need to have a full neuropsychological evaluation completed in order to fully understand a diagnosis and to, to um, believe the diagnosis of ADHD or not and uh, ha yeah having a full neuropsych allows us to um, you know be sure about the diagnosis you could do poorly just in all the auditory attention tasks that doesn't mean you're ADHD or of inattention of auditory information specifically could mean you have some type of verbal or language based learning problem that crosses not just areas of attention but also areas of memory reasoning and other things so same in the visual realm you might have weak visual attention specifically which does not imply uh, ADHD but implies some type of visual anomaly that could again cross different areas not just of attention but memory intellect and, and others so that is why you first need to have a full psychological evaluation completed. Let's say you get a diagnosis of ADHD of some kind when this is all said and done. And with the current DSM-5, that would mean uh, ADHD impulsive or ADHD inattentive or ADHD combined with both of those things. And um, the H in these days is just really implying impulsivity, not necessarily hyperactive. And there's also ADHD NOS, which I like and use a lot because it allows me to write down what I believe it really is, NOS standing for not otherwise specified, where we are, are able to be very specific. But let's say you have a diagnosis of that. What do you do now? Uh, you don't want to just be thrown on meds and, you know, have people say, oh, see you later, good luck with that. Uh, we can actually determine what the meds are doing, how effective they are, which medications work best, which amounts work best, and when they wear off during the day. We have the tools to do that. So it is best to not only have your full neuropsych done for diagnostic purposes, but also uh, have certain tasks readministered, and it doesn't take long to readminister them, maybe 45 minutes, on a medication of choice or on a trial of medication. I usually start people with 10 milligrams of methylphenidate, just to short acting, just to see what the meds are doing. And if I feel like the meds are working, then we can make decisions about long acting and whatnot. But if your scores go way up on these very specific tasks that do not have practice effects, and not having practice effects means you can do them over and over and over again, it's very difficult to get a, a different score. So having said that, if your scores go way up on the medication, there's really no question that the medication did that. We know that the medication probably did that. So we are able to determine uh, what the medication is doing and also when the medication is worn off because at some point in time, your scores are going to go back to baseline, which means what they were at the time of your neuropsych evaluation when you were not on the medication. So um, we want to figure out what the meds are doing or aren't doing. Do you need to go on medication? Absolutely not. There are tons of people that don't go on medication. Um, or they choose to go on medication sometimes. Uh, there's different types of medications as well. If you're a highly anxious person, a stimulant might not be the best idea for you. If you're not so anxious, stimulants can be beautiful. They're in and they're out of your system, sort of like coffee. Uh, if you're highly anxious, uh, still try the stimulants because they're the best way to go. They're the most user-friendly way to go about things. You can go off on weekends, leave it alone in the summer, whatever you want. But once you go to other types of medications that are for what we usually call dual diagnosis, like if you're anxious and inattentive, uh, and you, you start using drugs like Stratera or Wellbutrin, those drugs, they build up in your system slowly, and then you have to be wean off, weaned off slowly again. And they're just, they're just kind of a hassle. So um, side effects. Side effects to medication, largely appetite suppressant. Uh, ticks sometimes. It can create ticks in a very f f small population of people. Sometimes it can remove ticks too. So it does have a, a propensity for impacting ticks for good or for bad in some populations, not, not many people at all. And if you have a heart condition, you're going to want to see your doctor before you're prescribed a stimulant. Um, but I can honestly say that there are very few heart conditions for which a stimulant would uh, not be okay, but that's something you should look into. 
Are there other things to do rather than take medication to treat inattention? Absolutely. And again, it depends on the type of inattention that you have. There are also other symptoms that tend to go along with uh, diagnoses of ADHD, which could be sometimes weak working memory, which is treated dramatically differently than inattention, by the way. And sometimes weak executive functioning, which is difficulty organizing and planning. Meds tend not to impact executive functioning. Um, working memory, again, it's a whole different animal to attention. Some would disagree. Some believe working memory and attention are part of the same phenotype. I totally disagree as a scientist and as a clinician as well. They are treated very differently. But there are, anyway, this is the reason why you get neuropsych testing done. Yes, you could try medication. You don't have to just use medication. It depends on what your attention looks like. There's going to be different recommendations on, on how to treat it. If you are really, really little, um, you know, 6 to 12, sometimes medication is the way to go because it's hard for children to control it. It's not until you're older that you're even really aware of how it's impacting your life and you're really willing and wanting to do something about it and, like, apply different strategies. So, um, anyway, any questions, give me a holler. Email is L-C-E-S-T-N-I-C-K. That's L-C-E-S-T-N-I-C-K at gmail.com if you have any questions. And uh, we'll talk about this in more depth like the different types of treatments and whatnot, another day. Thanks.